In 2016, AMD released probably one of their best ever GPU releases, and it didn't just contain the RX 470 and the RX 480, they also contained these. And today, we're going to see if we can still game on it. Now I know this card doesn't look like much, it's actually quite an ugly card, but it is an AMD Radeon RX 460. It is a 2GB version, and the reason it looks like this is because it's actually an OEM model from something like a HP desktop. Back when AMD was releasing one of their best generations ever, the RX 400 series, they actually had a number of different models in there. We of course have the legendary RX 480, that is a card that came in both 4GB and 8GB, and even lives today in many people's gaming machines, and of course they also had the RX 470, slightly cut down version but also a great graphics card as well but at the bottom of the stack they actually had these and these actually sold quite well and that was down to the price to the performance that you were actually getting back in 2016 if you were to spend around 100 to 200 pounds on a graphics card you pretty much could play any game in 1080p and still get 60 frames per second i know that that's changed nowadays and games are extremely demanding so you actually have to spend quite a bit more now but it actually did make this a fantastic generation particularly for entry-level gamers coming into the platform now this is the first time that i've had an rx 460 on the channel i did used to have an rx 560 and that was a little bit more beefier than this it looked much nicer because it wasn't an oem model it was actually a gigabyte version and it also came with four gigabytes of vram but this one is a little bit more cut down putting its terrible looks to the side this card actually came with a base clock speed of 1090 megahertz it had 896 shaders it also comes with two gigabytes of gddr5 which in today's world is probably going to make it struggle quite a bit it had a memory bus of 128 bit and it had a tdp of only 75 watts that did mean that this card can run directly straight from the pci express port so it actually made it a great option for people upgrading their budget pre-builds it also came with an MSRP of only $120, which was astounding for the time because that meant that you could actually pick one of these cards up for very little and you could actually still play most of the games out there. Now nowadays this is a low spec card and to be honest it was back in the day, but because of the way that games actually run back then, it was more than enough for many people when upgrading older systems, particularly if they didn't have the power supply for anything bigger. But today we wanted to see how well it actually still performs in some more of the modern games and to do that we of course had to benchmark it. Now we actually benchmarked this card against our normal set of games because actually it is still a quite supported card and it is a DirectX 12 card so it should actually get games running but how well that's a different question when running games in a 1080p with a high preset which is our normal configuration this card actually lacked quite a bit in Dead Island 2 we managed to get an average of 25 frames per second with a 1% low of 12 of course that just meant that the game wasn't playable and it had major texture loading issues which was mostly down to that limitation in VRAM in High End Life we only managed to get an average of 20 frames per second with a 1% low of 9 of course that's just completely unplayable nowadays in Hogwarts Legacy we managed to get an average of 13 frames per second with a 1% low of 10 again another low performing game there although the game would start and you could actually walk around but you just wasn't getting a good experience resident evil 4 performed okay on this card getting an average of 18 frames per second with a one percent low of 13. of course that meant that the game still wasn't very playable and it wasn't very smooth either it was very slow and dark in many areas spider-man remastered quite surprisingly performed really poor here getting an average of 11 frames per second the one percent low of four that meant the game was completely terrible and you really wouldn't want to play it. It was very, very stuttery. Of course, Starfield was probably the worst performing game here, only getting an average of six frames per second with a 1% low of five. Again, another completely unplayable game. And then The Last of Us Part 1, getting an average of 11 frames per second with a 1% low of nine. You did also get some serious VRAM warnings with that game, showing you that it really wasn't designed for it. So epically failing to hit our targets at 1080p was a high preset. We of course needed to test this card again and actually adjust all the settings to see if we could actually get anything kind of playable. And I think we did reasonably well. In Dead Island 2, keeping the resolution at 1080p with a low preset and enabling FSR 2 with a quality preset, we managed to get an average of 47 frames per second with a 1% low of 20. The game didn't look that good to be honest due to the low textures which you had to run because of the limitation of VRAM but it was mostly smooth and with the odd stutter here and there in new areas you could actually get away with playing it. High in Life actually performed quite well once we adjusted some of the settings running the game in a 1080p with a high preset and just enabling FSR 2 with a performance setting we managed to get an average of 55 frames per second with a 1% low of 26. Now with FSR 2 set to a performance setting the game did look terrible but it did run quite smooth and we did try to lower the quality settings without enabling FSR 2 
but it did create a lot of weird artifacts on the screen, making it completely unplayable. In Hogwarts Legacy, we managed to get it just about playable, running in a 1080p with a low preset and enabling FSR 2 with a performance setting. We managed to get an average of 34 frames per second with a 1% low of 27. The game actually played reasonably smooth even with the low FPS, but it didn't actually look that good. It was playable though, even with the limitation in the hardware and you had to have a lot of patience. Adjusting the settings in Resident Evil 4 didn't really actually improve that much. The game was still quite unplayable. It gave you really more of a last generation console kind of experience, running it in a 1080p with a low preset and enabling FSR 2 with a performance setting. We only managed to get it up to 28 frames per second with a 1% low of 21. You probably really wouldn't want to play this game on this card and to be honest it really wasn't designed for it so you're not missing much and you're not really losing out. Spider-Man Remastered though actually did perform reasonably well once we set it to a 1080p resolution with a low preset and enabling FSR 2.1 with a performance setting. We managed to get an average of 42 frames per second here with a 1% low of 21. At these settings the game didn't actually look that good which is quite a shame because Spider-Man Remastered tends to look pretty good in any kind of configuration that you do but just enabling all of this stuff and lowering it all the way down to low did actually affect that gameplay quality quite a bit. It also suffered from a lot of random stuttering here and there, so you could get away with playing the game, but you might have a pretty bad experience. Unsurprisingly, Starfield was still unplayable, even though we did drop the resolution here to 720p and the quality's preset to low, and we did enable FSR 2. We managed to get an average of 13 frames per second with a 1% low of only 11. The game looked terrible and it performed even worse, so this is not a game for the RX 460 2GB. When tweaking the settings in The Last of Us Part 1, we managed to get the game reasonably playable. It was more of a console experience again, keeping the resolution at 1080p and lowering the quality preset to low while enabling FSR 2 to a performance setting. We managed to get an average of 28 frames per second with a 1% low of 19. The game is surprisingly playable and smooth with this kind of performance even with the low FPS and it does remind us very much of the original PS4 version, particularly when it came to the graphical quality on the screen. So whilst we can the settings, we did actually manage to get this little card performing okay in some of those games. You could get away with it in certain titles, but for others, it was completely not there. Should you actually go out and buy an RX 460 today? Probably not, but they are actually reasonably cheap. I managed to pick this card up for just £25, which may or may not actually be worth it considering the performance, but in the current market, there's not a lot of choice for people out there. You could actually still pick one of these up and turn something like a Dell Optiplex into a gaming machine, but you are going to be limited to the games that you actually can play. What could you actually play with this card? Well, to find that out, I did do a little bit more testing and I found some reasonable results. Back for Blood in a 1080p with a low preset and enabling FSR 1 to a balanced setting, you could easily achieve 60 FPS plus and the game looked pretty good as well. Doom Eternal in 1080p with a low preset, again, could achieve a 60 FPS plus experience and also looked fantastic. Even in Stray with a 1080p resolution and a medium preset, you could achieve 40 frames per second. The game had the odd stutter here and there, but it is more than playable and you could get away with it. And by popular demand, you can get a fantastic experience in Black Mesa. In 1080p with an ultra preset you can easily achieve over 90 frames per second and the game is pretty awesome. So there are many games out there that you can actually play on a card like this so you are not completely limited. There are thousands of games in the back catalogue on the PC which is always a beauty of PC gaming that you can actually get away with playing on one of these. Let me know in the comments below have you had an RX 460? Do you still have one and what kind of games are you playing? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and you want to see what other GPUs we're going to be catching up with soon because we do have many more coming. And I'm sure as always, we'll catch you guys in the next one.